I'd like to talk a little bit about the physics experiments that I have created to help scientists come to the conclusion that this indeed is a virtual reality. Before scientists will believe anything, this is the way science works, they need an experiment that confirms that belief. That's what makes a belief turn into a fact. You might believe that something will work a certain way, but until the experiment is done, it's not a fact. It's just a theory or even just a hypothesis. So I have created a set of experiments that could be done which lend a lot of evidence to the idea that we're living within a virtual reality. I wouldn't say they prove where you live in a virtual reality because science really isn't about proof. Nothing is really proved anymore in science. In the day of Newton, we thought we could prove things and then we had laws like Newton's laws, but we don't have laws anymore because we realize we don't have all the information. More information will come in the years ahead and in the decades and in the millennia ahead and to say that you have proven something is a bit of a stretch. So these, these experiments will lend a lot of credibility to the idea of virtual reality. I have a whole set here and some of them are there just to lead up to the ones that are more important. Some of them are there to test new ideas, new things that have never actually been studied before, like the, the observer. Does the observer merely have to look and see the data, or does it have to be recorded? That's not really been tested, as far as I know, as far as I've been able to find out in the literature. Does that observer have to be a human being, or could it be anything that's conscious, you know, that observes the, the which way data. In other words, which slit that the particle goes through, which hole the particle goes through. These are questions that haven't really been studied. There are several others in that, in that line uh, that I've done maybe five or six variations of that. And this is just for my own information. Well, for the information of science, because these are areas, again, un, unstudied. I have one experiment, and I call that experiment two. I think it was the second one in my, my uh, uh, talking about the experiments, which you can find, by the way, on my YouTube site as mbt-la. I gave these in LA in uh, October 2016. And experiment two probes the idea of the observer and what the observer observes. Does the observer need to observe recorded information. If a particle is detected, is that enough to create the which way data? Or does that detection actually have to be recorded? That's a key idea. Now, virtual reality can work just very well and simply if the observer sees, records, shall we say, that's kind of what sees mean, records the which way data, and that which way data is available for any observer to look at. Now that's typically the experiment that's, that's done. But the question is, if we just did the detection without recording the data, what would happen? So I think that what would happen is that we would not get which way data because we wouldn't have any information that a consciousness could look at. So it hasn't actually come into the reality yet. Of course, that could be wrong. Like any experiment, you don't really know what the answer is until you do the experiment. It's possible that the larger conscious system could just decide that this idea of entanglement is enough to create information, and because of that, it doesn't need the recorded data. Now, that's what most physicists believe is true. I'm going in the opposite direction saying, could be true, but I'm not sure. And since there's no research that actually answers that question, then I did experiment two, so I could answer that question. Now, the other experiments that I have, the ones that, that are most important, 
really don't depend on the answer to experiment two at all. They're completely independent of that. So it doesn't matter which way that number two turns out. These other experiments are quite independent and will stand on their own. And they do some rather miraculous things. There's one that allows the experimenter to determine how an atom will decay, what direction the decayed particle will go in. In other words, what direction the radiation, the resultant radiation from the, from the decay of the atom, uh, which direction will that go in? Now, that should be impossible. That should be completely random. But I think that uh, in this experiment, I can uh, kind of trap the, the uh, system, the larger kinds of system, or you might say reality, between a rock and a hard place and force it to show us some of how it works, and that I indeed can, ahead of time, predict how an atom will decay. Also, I have an experiment where there is a beam splitter. A beam splitter is a thing that's used in optics, where a photon will get to a beam splitter and it does one of two things. It either transmits that photon, in other words, the photon goes right through it, the light goes right through it, comes out the other side, or it reflects it. It's called a half-silvered mirror. A half-silvered mirror, you can think of it, this is not exactly the way they're made, but you could think of it as a piece of glass that has a lot of little dots of mirror on it, a lot of silver dots on it. But the silver dots just cover half the area, and the other half of the area is just clear glass. So depending on where the photon hits, if it hits one of those little mirror spots, it gets reflected. If it hits the non-mirrored spots, it goes straight through. Now that's just a metaphorical description. Not really made that way, but that's the function. So light hits it and is either reflected or transmitted. And in my experiment, I can predict which one that's going to be, whether it actually is reflected or transmitted ahead of time before it happens. Again, that is impossible. But I think that's doable in this experiment. And you see, the only way that I could predict that would be if this indeed is a virtual reality and the results are indeed pulled from a random draw from a probability distribution of the possibilities. If that's the case and that's the way reality works, then that would explain these miracles, if you will, these things that are impossible would be explained. Other than that, they'd be extremely hard to explain because I can't think of any other way other than virtual reality that can explain these things. So that's why if they work the way I hope they will, we will have some very strong evidence for virtual reality being a real thing, the way this universe works. So those are a, a few comments about the experiments. Now, in all these experiments, the larger conscious system has choices in those experiments. This is a thinking, aware, knowledgeable system. It's conscious, you see? So, this is a consciousness system. The system can make decisions and choices. There are multiple ways that it could have these experiments come out. It could decide to do it this way or it could decide to do it that way. And I've taken some of the things I've known in my own research about the conscious system and some ideas such as the system is finite and therefore has limited capacity. Therefore, it will always take the path of the most efficient computation. Unless, of course, it has a good reason that it doesn't want to do that, you see. It could do things that aren't efficient on purpose for some other reason. So my criteria for believing that these experiments might produce some very outstanding evidence depend on my assumptions that the computation will be parsimonious, that means it will be very efficient, that the system primarily wants to maintain consistency in this reality frame, in this virtual reality, because an inconsistent reality is just not a very good schoolhouse, not a very good learning lab. And because the system is virtual, it 
only produces data streams to players and the reality actually exists only in the mind of the player. So if things are done that never reach a data stream, therefore never get to the mind of a player, like a detector that's just detecting, but no information is ever created that a player gets, then my thought is that the system really doesn't care about that because the reality is generated in the minds of the players. That's the nature of a virtual reality. So with these concepts, I've come up with some experiments. The experiments are based on my understanding of how virtual reality works. And they, of course, like any experiment, may work the way I think or may not. But I'd really like to know the results. That's how science works. If I will be a, I will be a winner, whether they work the way I want them to work, or I shouldn't say want, but if they work the way I think they'll work or not, because I will learn something. That's how models grow. You get information back from experiments, and if it surprises you, then you have to adjust your model, change the way you look at the world. If it confirms you, then you know that the assumptions you've made have been good assumptions. So I think it's exciting. I'm looking forward to it. And I feel like I will be a winner in either case because I will learn the things that I need to learn to improve the theory that I have. This theory has solved so many outstanding problems that it's hard to believe that it is entirely wrong. Now, the way I interpret this virtual reality into the world of quantum mechanics and physics, that's kind of a stands on its own. That's its own little adventure of mine, taking the virtual reality and, and trying to explain quantum mechanics problems with it. If that fails, well, all the rest of the, the uh, my big toe reality frame and model still stands and still solves all the problems that it solves, but perhaps I'd have to rethink how it is I'm applying it to quantum mechanics, and that would be very good, very informative for me. And if they do come out the way I say, then they will launch, I think, a, a revolution in science. They will speed up what's going to happen anyway, but they will just build a fire under it to find these things that are totally impossible, would take a miracle to do, that you can do. So that's my experiments, and uh, I'm excited about it. I hope to get them uh, done in the next year or so. And uh, when I do, I'll have it out on YouTube, just like everything else. Thanks for listening.